Different. 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 Today's state is well known to foreigners, but in reality is very different from its image. Today we will spend time with senior citizens, policemen, city officials, and plantation owners in the place where they live and work, in Florida. Police work in Miami isn't like the television version. Accompany two police officers and learn why their lives are different from others you may be familiar with. Miami has been probably the sexiest place on earth. As soon as I got here, as soon as I got off the plane, as soon as I put my foot on the ground here, I said, I'm home. This is it. This is where I want to be. I saw the palm trees. Um, I saw the, uh, the, the deco uh, um, architecture. Um, I saw the blue water, the beaches. Um, but more importantly, I saw the people. Uh, there was just a, such a variety of, uh, of folks here from all over the world. This truly is the southern melting pot of the United States. And uh, it's a microcosm of the whole world. It's a very, very exciting, dynamic place. Um, you know, many, many people are uh, confused when they think of Miami, they think Miami Vice. Well, as much as I'd like to say that uh, I live on a houseboat and I have got a, uh, a crocodile for a pet and I have uh, 10 million women chasing me, um, I have to say that uh, my life is just a tad different <laughs> than that. Um, well, maybe I have the women, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I, I don't live like that. And the average cop here doesn't either. Not to say we don't chase bad guys, we chase bad guys, that's what we do. But we don't, um, we don't do it in that style. I mean, uh, I think that uh, Sonny Crockett was more concerned with uh, how his, his hair was flying in the breeze and his, his uh, pink jacket looked than he was with actually catching a real bad guy. In, in real life, it's not like that. And I think your viewers understand that. Um, but I will say that the, uh, the excitement of Miami, the, the beauty of Miami, and the cultural diversity is all there uh, that you might have seen on Miami Vice. Um, the Miami Police Department is also different. It's a uh, uh, very progressive uh, law enforcement operation. We have a chief of police that just uh, um, is always thinking of new things. We're on the cutting edge of, uh, for example, community policing. We have sports programs. We have a boxing program. We have a police athletic league that deals with basketball, everything from basketball, actually, to, to dancing. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a program where we try to reach out to kids at risk and bring them in and get them involved in some sort of pro-social pro activity on a regular basis. We take ex-gang members or current gang members, and we try to preach the theory of nonviolence. Actually, preach is not the right word. We try to show them the theory of nonviolence. We have gang officers who, on Friday, are out there arresting gang members, and on Saturday, are out there playing basketball with gang members. So in that way, they're establishing a personal rapport. We make our officers uh, go out and take ownership of their neighborhoods that they patrol. I mean, if there's a specific problem, whether it's a serious, serious problem, uh, like armed robberies, or a quality of life issue, like someone drinking in public, or panhandling, uh, we tell our officers, um, you solve that problem. No, you solve that problem. That's your responsibility. That's not all of your responsibilities. That's you, Officer Brown. That's your responsibility to figure out how to solve that problem. And you can do it just about any way within the law you want to do it. So the officer takes ownership of that. He has to go out and talk to the folks who are having that particular problem and uh, work with them to make sure that that problem goes away. Even if we have to do it block by block, street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood, uh, we find a way to make sure that we tackle every single problem on a neighborhood level, on a personal level. And that, again, is different. I have to say that uh, my life is just a tad different. A tad different means a little bit different. So th in that way, they're establishing a personal rapport. Rapport is the relationship you have with other people. 
Sam 342, uh, I'll go buy that call with him. Okay, so we'll turn the call back on it. We don't have the person on the line. That's yourself. 7442. Okay, where we're going to go to, it's an in progress call that just came out, and it's a burglary in progress. We All we got on it was that uh, there was a white male in the rear possibly breaking into the uh, into the uh, apartment. Unit 2H, taken about 720, north of 12 Point. 7342, I'm arrival to. Okay, what we had here was a, uh, what the victim is telling us, that it was a uh, burglary in progress. Up on arrival, what he did was he was remodeling the house. He heard somebody in the back door. When he looked out the uh, peephole, he noticed that somebody was out there trying to open the door. By the time he called us and we made it out here, the gentleman had already cleared the scene. The officer on the scene is going to go ahead and uh, file the uh, paperwork on it, the burglary report, and we're going to go ahead and clear and uh, respond to the next call. The um, computer that we got is the, uh, we're called MDC, it's what it is, and this is connected directly to the uh, FCIC and CIC. FCIC is Florida Criminal Information Center. The NCIC is the National Criminal Information Center. We can run just about, we can get everything from this computer. We can get our calls, we can run a subject, we can run cars, any serial number from any items, boats. We can get everything done through this. Within the next uh, few months, according to what they tell us, is we're going to be able to get our worksheets done through this, which eliminates some of the paperwork that we do by hand. Plus, we're also going to be able to do our reports on the uh, computer, which is excellent, too, because it automatically sends the, the uh, report to the uh, computer system in the station, and we don't have to uh, write the report, and then the uh, civilians does not have to wait the uh, seven to ten days to uh, get a copy of it. Right now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to stop at a uh, local body shop. It's also a friend of mine. I, we became friends from uh, working in the area. I've met him through here. Uh, helped him out in a uh, situation where he had with his driver's license. Right now, he is uh, also fixing a one of my cars. As a matter of fact, I sort of bought a car, and I asked him if he uh, was able to uh, take care of it. And uh, that way, I can keep the uh, business and the money flowing back into East Little Van instead of taking it away from the city. It's, this is where we're at now. Uh, the owner's waving me in. He wants to show me what he's done to the car. So. This is the color de verdad, el silver. Okay, ya, ya así vienen de factoría. Ya, vienen así de ese color. Sí, es, este, estos son exactamente los de factoría. Así tienen que tener todo. Tú no ves cómo está todo. Esto no, esto no va en, el, en la puerta, pero todo lo demás, las líneas y eso, sí tienen que ir. Aquí lleva dos tonos. 550 pesos, Peri. ¿Por eso no lo he hecho? ¿En la revista esa que te dije? Bueno, yo lo veo el lunes, entonces. Hasta luego. Gracias. My, uh normal job in the area. See, I work, uh, I work BEATS. I don't work uh, regular patrol. BEATS is a uh, officer that's assigned to a certain area, and mostly what we do is we take care of the area, we deal with the uh, merchants in the area, the community, and try to help out in whatever way we can. Hmm. Hang on. on the side How's um, the business doing? Pretty good. We've been busy today and everything's been quiet. 
At least at night when it should be. Yeah, you guys uh, had no more problems with that burglary no, yet the other no, day? No. Thank God, no burglaries, no nothing, everything's clean. Okay. How about the uh, our locals from out here from the uh, no, sidewalk? They, nothing? I guess they're in jail. They've been hiding or something. I haven't seen them around. Yeah, that's good. Just working hard and keeping busy. Excellent. All right, you know where we're at if you ever need us. Anyway. All right, All right, thanks a lot. You have a good one, buddy. You too. Sandra 42, have him kiss wife for me. They don't usually, Haitian, the Haitian community is not usually uh, troublemakers. As a matter of fact, I've learned from the time that I've been down here with them that as long as you respect where they're from and respect their culture, they can, uh, they'll communicate and they'll respect you. Come here, buddy. What's going on? Just picking up some cans. Picking up some cans? Yeah. As long as, long as the uh, owner of the property says it's okay for you to go on to their, their property to pick up some of the stuff. I don't have a problem. But my problem comes in is when you go into somebody's property and they call us up and they say, listen, he came into my yard, I didn't tell him anything. Yeah. You know, a lot of times the business owners in this area, they'll tell you, you can pick up whatever you want from there because a lot of the stuff is trash for them anyway, which yeah. might be uh, important for you. Okay, it might be worth something to you. Yeah. Just make sure that if you're going to pick up something from somebody's property, just knock yeah. on their door and let them know. I do, Listen, I if do. you don't want this, uh, I'll pick it up and I'll take it from you. Yeah, I, I do. All right. Well, Reggie, you have a good day, buddy. You too, All right, buddy. you have a good one. By the time he called us and we made it out here, the gentleman had already cleared the scene. The police cleared the scene when they mean left the area. The computer that we got is the, uh, we call NDC. It's what it is, and this is connected directly to the uh, FCIC and CIC. FCIC is Florida Criminal Information Center. The NCIC is the National Criminal Information Center. Right now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to stop at a uh, local body shop. Remember, a body shop is not only a place to buy cosmetics, but a place where car bodies are repaired. Hang on. on the sidewalk. American people say sidewalk, and British people say pavement for the place people walk. What's going on? Just picking up some cans. Up some and cans. Americans say cans, when British people say tins. The images of Hispanics in Miami are not very favorable. This part of the city is full of contrasts. Originally, this area was for very wealthy people. Today, this has changed to an area for immigrants. Not everyone here, though, is Cuban. Meet a gentleman from the city government to find out how different life in Little Havana really is. My name is Pablo Canton, and the administrator for the Neighborhood Enhancement Team here in uh, East Little Havana. I've been here in Miami for a few years, since 1961. I came from Cuba, and uh, briefly, in a few words, uh, uh, I went to the University of Miami. I graduated in 1969 with a Bachelor in Business Administration. I went to the Army for a couple of years as an infantry officer. As you can see, I was a paratrooper with the 101st Airborne. After that, I came back to Miami, and I went back to uh, Florida International University, and I have a Bachelor of Science in Construction Management. I went uh, into business in the private field for a few years, and uh, I've been working with the city of Miami now since 1987. Uh, I started to work in this project here in East Havana approximately six years ago. Uh, what is NET? What are we? What, what do we do here in East Havana? Uh, we are, again, part of the city of Miami government. The city is divided in 13 different areas. I'm in charge of this area in East Havana. We try to solve the problems from the community. People call us with all kinds of problems, garbage, public works, you know, problems in the streets, uh, including police problems. You know, people, uh, uh, vagrants, um, maybe a stolen car or whatever. And we try to help these people with whatever problems they have. So most of the time, my days are here in the office, listening to people, 
taking telephone calls and different complaints and going out to the streets to find out exactly uh, what can we do to solve those problems. I think uh, in the last few years it has been very effective. We have done uh, uh, a lot of things for the community and you can see the difference. Still there's a lot to be done. Right now we are trying to educate some of the people. As you know this area is not only a majority of Cuban uh, citizens or Cuban nationals that, that uh, immigrated to the United States. We have a lot of other Central American countries uh, that have residents in the area, uh, largely Nicaraguans, Hondurans, and some other countries from Central America. Uh, again, some of these people in their countries do not have the laws that we have here in the United States. So we have to educate them as far as uh, uh, solid waste when they throw their garbage in the streets, the pickup days, sometimes uh, they throw it any time of the week and we have specific days where the garbage is picked up. So we have to make sure that everybody follows up the laws, otherwise we have garbage all over the streets. Uh, same thing with crossing the streets in the corner or uh, maybe throwing litter out in the streets, which is something that we are definitely very much against. Uh, we want to keep the image of Miami as a clean city and we uh, not only uh, hope that the tourists abide by the law, but our own residents should be the first ones that should follow the laws and keep the city clean. Aldo, that, that lot that we have uh, on 7th Street and uh, Southwest 4th Avenue, what's the status of that, of that lot? What's happening there? Okay, today I'm sending a notice of violation, uh, which the owner should receive it and, have ten, and they have 10 days to clear it or they will be taken to court enforcement board. Okay, uh, you talked to him? Yes, I spoke with him this morning. Okay, now how about that other structure at 501, Let's see. 501, 509, Northwest First, uh, First Street? Okay, they also been notified and they're going to court enforcement board on the 20th of um, March um, and they should start um, clearing it. Okay, any anyone inside that building? Are they going in or? This morning there were some arrests, arrests done um, for some trespassers that were in there. Okay, the owner knows that if he doesn't comply, we're going to demolish the building. If by June 1st he doesn't block the doors, uh, the place will be demolished. Yes, he's been aware of it. Okay, if he doesn't take care of it, uh, we have no other choice but to uh, knock it down. Demolish. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll call you in a little while for another one. East okay. Little Havana, can I help you? People call us with all kinds of problems, garbage, public works, you know, problems in the streets. Uh, including police problems, you know, people, uh, uh, vagrants. Vagrants are homeless people who wander from place to place. So we have to make sure that everybody follows up the laws, otherwise we have garbage all over the streets. Remember, garbage is the word used in America where the British people say rubbish. Maybe throwing litter out in the streets, which is something that we are definitely very much against. Litter is the garbage that's thrown out in public places. This morning there were some arrests for some trespassers that were in there. Trespassers are people who enter others' property without permission. Not all senior citizens in Florida are wealthy retirees from the north. Visit a senior citizen's recreation center to find out why it's different. Mr. Myers, you know every morning when you get here, I like to beat you at a game of dominoes. What happened to you yesterday? I was taking care of business. Business is vital and important to me. That's why I wasn't here. Well, come on and get your little whipping started here, because here we go. Get through using your bleach out your jug. You don't mm -hmm. have to throw it away. You can make beautiful things. You wouldn't and believe this, this is me. kind of color. Yeah. Get through using your bleach. Many people don't say the G at the end. Using or using. Using your bleach out your jug. You don't mm -hmm. have to throw it away. The words here run together. My name is Annie Davis, and I'm the center manager here for the senior citizens of the Perrine Richmond Heights area. And we are under Dade County Parks and Recreation Department and Community Action Agency. And um, I've been here 28 years. 
I program for the seniors. Uh, all of the part, all of the arts and crafts, all of the ceramics, the meals program, the trips, the parties. I'm in charge of all of the recreational activities. It's very important for them to come here and take part. It gets them out of the house. It gets them out with their peer group, and they get to mangle and talk and share problems and happiness with one another on a daily basis. We've been right here at this center since August 1970, and uh, we started out as a teen center in the afternoon with the senior citizens program in the mornings. And then we graduated from that, and then the seniors got it all by themselves. So, and we are open from nine to five. We have transportation that we have to share with others that the seniors don't get to get here at around about 10 or 10.30, and they leave about two. But if they want to, and when there's something special, we are here from nine to five. What makes this center different? Because we are here, number one, and we're working with the elderly and getting them out of the home. And, and we are visible, and we are known, and we've been here. So I think that's the highlight of it. It gets them out of the house. It gets them out with their peer group. And they get to mangle and talk and share problems and happiness with one another on a daily basis. Raise your arms up in front of you. Raise your, your arms up in front of you. Against the back of the seat. Slowly push against, the, against the back of the seat. The and push into the seat back. Push. Push. Now slowly bend forward. Slowly. One, two, slowly. three, four. Strain your legs and try to touch your toes. Try to touch your toes. Then try to touch your toes. Slowly back up into a sitting position. Remember to brace the feet and push into the back of the chair. Push. Arms out to the side of the body. Arms out to the side. Slowly bend to the left. Bend to your left. Until the left hand touches the floor. All the way down to your left hand touches the floor. And if you're pretty blue, then you can uh, get uh, Easter straw. Little kids will be proud of a little basket full of Easter straw and put you some little Easter candy or a little Easter, Easter rabbit eggs. or Easter egg. And you can give it to a kid mm -hmm. for Easter. And all these, uh, that's what we make some all out. And they are beautiful. This is a beautiful color. Yeah. And these are beautiful. We have the whole set of these. That's the set over there. Mm -hmm. These three pieces goes together. So when we get started again, we finish this one up because this set here yeah. go with that set over there. Then you make you a nice little bowl, and you have a pin cushion. When you go into the store, you pay about ten or fifteen dollars for. A Pin cushion when you can just take a tuna fish cane and make yourself a nice pin cushion at home. And these are beautiful. We have the whole set of these. That's the set over there. These three pieces goes together. The grammar for black English is often different. Here you have a plural subject and a singular verb. Citrus fruit plantations haven't always been in Florida. Spend time with the staff of a different kind of farm to share some unique Florida experiences. And got a job as a manager managing the Nola Grove that you see here this morning. Uh, we stayed here for a number of years working this grove and then we went into other groves. And six years ago, we came back and as purchased this grove was up for sale. So after we purchased it, we started developing towards the educational because we both have a certified teacher's background. And we've been in farming all our lives, so as farmers, we're kind of city farmers in the sense that we're different in the sense of farming close to the city. I grew up close to a city in Connecticut, farming, and same did Barb close to Cleveland, Ohio. So as a result of this operation is geared to education of children. We have tours here every day for the school children with our Native American Martin Two Feather. He does the alligator handling for us.
Girl, right down, deep throat. Uh. <laughs> then you want to tie it off. And the way to tie it off is simply like this. We're small, very small, family little farm. We don't ship to supermarkets. Our juice is all sold only at the retail store here. And as you notice, we make the apple pies, uh, have our animals, our deer, our pigs, our coons, our fox. All this is part of our operation. Barbara takes care of our shipping part of it here, the gift. We take oranges and ship them in boxes to individual families. Your customers come down, your visitors come down. They want to send a gift of Citrus, Florida back north. That's what we do. We pack everything and ship it up as an individual gift. And we also ship different salad dressings, different marmalades, candies, anything that says, this is Florida, this is a gift from Florida. Barb also takes care of our gift shop. We have, as you noticed this morning, as we took you through there, very unique gifts, uh, items that are hard to find. Things that you can't go into a mall and find. So you have a reason to come in here, and when you buy something from Nola Grows, you remember this is really a, a special place to come. We're, uh, so to speak, 30 acres right in the middle of the city here. So as a result, people come out here and relax under the trees. They'll spend a day of fun here with their children, uh, with the shows and everything else. And the tours, every hour on the hour, we have a tour going throughout the Grove. We're, uh, so to speak, 30 acres right in the middle of the city here. Americans don't use the metric system. They use old forms like acre. We're going to bypass our simulated Indian village here on the left with our lodge, our cheeky, and our alligator pits. But don't worry, we will be back through. The trees here in this area are banyan trees. They're related to the ficus trees. And again, Amos and Andy are also responsible for their planting. Now here on the right is pork chop and ham bone. Ham bone is about a year and a half old, so he's got a lot of growing, a lot of catching up to do. Now if you take a look at pork chop's mouth, you'll see some tufts sticking out. Well, keep in mind, as pork chop gets older, those tufts will get a little longer. Now a little trivia about these two. They have the same IQ as the dolphin, the mammal. Even Geronimo had been defeated at Canyon de Chez. Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, and the others defeated shortly after the Battle of Little Bighorn. The Battle of Little, the Bitter Creek decided the outcome of what was to happen to most of the Western Native Americans. My tribe laid down their weapons in 1859 without firing a shot. Chief Joseph, after his longest manhunt in history, decided in order to save his mother and his children and his wife, he laid down his arms, leaving only Florida as the last stronghold. Chief Joseph, after his longest manhunt in history, decided in order to save his mother and his children and his wife, he laid down his arms, leaving only Florida as the last stronghold. A stronghold, a final place where people feel secure. We're trying to show people that Florida is really part of the history, what Florida was like in the old days. <laughs>